So here's something new. Uh, I got sent a, um, a a sample, a manufacturing sample or engineering sample, whatever you want to call it, of one of the new mods from uh, One Chip, as I like to call them. Uh, they made a Game Boy Pocket glowing button mod thing, however you want to call it. Uh, so install. They didn't send me any instructions, but I really don't think any are necessary for something like this. Uh, install is pretty simple. You just got to peel off the adhesive backing on this thing, set it down on the pocket motherboard itself, and then just solder down these two points. We have a ground connection and then a VCC connection here. Both of these just wire into the um, cartridge slot. Cartridge slot. Uh, you will also probably have to remove your power LED if you have one and if you want to use this. If not, you can literally just cut this part off. And um, I don't know, it, it's it's pretty fascinating. So let's take a closer look at it. Um, so the first thing is all of the button LEDs are RGB LEDs, which means they have R, red, green, and uh, blue diodes in there. Uh, but with how this ribbon is constructed, there's no real way to use them all. Um, you'd have to wire up a three-way switch. As it is now, uh, you can select the color by taking this resistor here and moving it to one of these two empty pads. So right now it is soldered down to the R2 position, which I believe is green. Uh, I don't know what the R3 position is and I don't know what the R1 position is. Uh, but if we follow this trace here, I can see that R1 is connected to red, R3 must be connected to blue, and then R2 is connected to green. So changing the color is as simple as literally moving that resistor. I'm curious if wiring up all three will give us white, but um, I don't have any extra resistors on hand easily accessible to try that out. Uh, so we'll have to leave that for another time. I'm probably going to do a follow-up to this video because I don't have everything that I want to do to do this mod. Um, I didn't really think about this beforehand, and this thing kind of just landed in my lap uh, without leaving me much time to prepare. So that's all right. We'll work with what we got. So today's donor is going to be this Game Boy Pocket. I have it plugged in and charging because I don't remember the last time I charged it and I don't know how dead it is. But based off of uh, the current that it's pulling, I'm guessing it's basically done charging. It's only pulling 60 milliamps. And I think when the battery is nearly depleted, it pulls like 500 or even up to 1000 milliamps or one amp as the rest of the world likes to call it. So it's probably fine. But... We will not be using the LED portion of this ribbon today because, as you may notice, I have a multicolor LED in there. Um, and that is for the charge mod. It's red while charging, either green or blue when charging complete, and then white when it's on. I don't actually remember the colors, but this is just that Giltessa mod that I did a while back. Uh, it does have a rechargeable battery in this thing because... That, that, that's the console that I did the mod on. Uh, but I don't necessarily recommend you doing a mod like this on a pocket that doesn't already have some sort of battery mod going on. Because if you have a bunch of other mods in your pocket already, like a backlight kit, and if you're using it with a flash cart on uh, regular batteries, you might run into some issues. Now, um, the LED on this ribbon does make it pretty appealing to solder into something like a pocket color that I don't have an LED in because the um, Game Boy Color LED position just didn't line up with the pocket, so the easiest solution was to just remove the LED entirely, but this would line up where I had to solder this in. The only problem is this has some pretty bitchin' buttons in it and I don't want to downgrade the buttons, so we're not going to be using this console. It would be pretty neat though. But anyway, we will use the Game Boy Pocket as a donor, not the uh, modified Game Boy Color. Um, and I will have to swap out the buttons, unfortunately. I, I 
grown rather fond of this color combo, but I can always recreate it later in some other build, so that'll be alright. But in the meantime, let us take a look at the kit. I have my power supply here, I have it on, and I have it set to 5 volts. And if I take my leads, oh, I don't have it on, now I do. I take my leads and hook them up to the, let's try not holding that over, um, ground and VCC pads. You can see it lights up. Ta-da! It's not very bright, but that's probably a function of this resistor right here. We could probably swap that out with a lower value and get brighter LEDs at the cost of more power usage. But the reason I wanted to use my power supply on this is to take a look at the power usage. At 5 volts, this thing pulls a whopping 4 milliamps, if you can see that on the power supply, which is incredibly low. Uh, so low, in fact, that I may have to take back my earlier statement about using it in a modified pocket. Uh, but let us try out the other resistor positions and see what it looks like. We've got tin these pads. Now it's just a matter of lifting that resistor and putting it right there. And then if we try this again, what did I say it was blue? Yeah, there we go, blue. So it might be kind of hard to see the uh, power LED up here, but this one is always blue regardless of what you uh, set the buttons to. Uh, that is not an RGB LED. So it is what it is, but I think it's fine. The blue LEDs also pull a whopping four milliamps. And let's try the red. I have no idea what the uh, end game version of this mod looks like. I don't know if they plan on releasing it just like this or um, branding it or something. I don't know. Maybe there will be a version with all three resistors and you can just enjoy white LEDs or something. Ooh, let's not get those mixed. Won't light up otherwise. And red. Interestingly, the red pulls 6 milliamps. A little bit higher. Up almost 50% more, in fact. Uh, I don't... My power supply doesn't have the precision to measure that low. And in this particular case, I don't even think it's worth bothering with that low current. Um, the pocket already has a tremendously low battery life. I'd expect, oh, there it is, green when it's fully charged. Uh, I'd expect it to last about three and a half hours, depending on the specific batteries and mods in the game you're playing, uh, when modified. And um, adding something like this will cost you maybe five minutes, if that, which three and a half hours already isn't long, but five minutes, Plus or minus five minutes. Who cares about plus or minus five minutes, you know? Uh, but anyway, let me grab my multimeter. And even though you're not supposed to measure components in circuit because the other components in the circuit may interfere, let's measure this resistor. We can still probably get a good ballpark estimate. My multimeter, I'm sorry, my hand is in the way. It is showing 0.998 kilo ohms, which means it is a 1000 ohm resistor. So if we want brighter, we can probably swap in, I don't know, let's try a, a 500 ohm resistor, see what happens. Or let me actually see what I have first. I have more 1K resistors. You know, let's wire up all three, see what happens. Are those even the right size? No, they aren't. Will that work anyway? I think it will. Let's find out. Let's swap in some other resistors.
Actually, I suppose before I do that, I should try the uh, other colors. Hmm. Or at least a lower. Boom. Sister. Unfortunately, I have neglected to buy an actual book, so this is this is what we got. Sort through here until I find something that's less than a thousand. About 470, that looks good. There's a hundred, but I bet that'd be way too bright. Try it anyway, find out. Forty-seven, that's definite no no. <laughs> One no. What the heck is that? What do you think? 150? Yeah, those are 150. That's uh, better than 100. Seventy-five K, hundred K, no, three ninety, sixty-two, no, five point one, K twenty-two, five point one, total, three hundred thirty, four seventy, and forty-three K. Yeah. So these are probably the most common values, given that I had them in my assortment. So. Let's try them out, see what happens. We have 150 and then 470. I'm gonna try the 150 first. The proper size resistor looks like an 0603. But of course, I'm using 0805 because that's that's what I have. And I am going to use the blue pads, not the red ones. We'll try multiple values in a moment. I'm gonna kill my lights too. Yeah, that's much brighter, but now the power usage is 17 milliamps instead of, uh, what was it, four? I think that's probably a much better value. Be interesting to find out is if these things get warm. I'd have to test it longer than just a few minutes, but since they're not getting warm to the touch, it's still probably fine to use this value. I'd say probably don't go less than 500, but so far it seems fine to use a 470. And for, oh wait, was that even 470? That wasn't a 470, that was... That was the 150. Well, there you go. This one's the 470. I don't know if that's connected. I guess it is. Those don't look... Those don't look any dimmer to me. But maybe they are. It's hard to tell. It's pulling half the current at 7 milliamps, so... 
course they won't wouldn't be getting hot doesn't matter um that's probably a good value let's try let's try multiples I'm fairly certain that should work but let's find out Interesting that one of them doesn't seem to light up with both diodes, but 28 milliamps. I'm using both the 170 and the 470, but I have multiple channels lit up. K resistor back on there. Maybe not. Uh, I'm having a horrible time with this. Let's do it the proper way instead of the easy way, quote unquote. All right, now the red one's back down. But we're at a thousand again. Oh, and now this LED doesn't seem to work at all. I must have burned it out. That's a shame. But again, it is a sample, and I am messing around with it in ways that technically not supposed to, I guess. I wonder why that stopped. I don't see anything. Let's try all three at the same time. Now we have three 1K ohm resistors, and we should get white, but I don't quite get white because that LED is giving me a little bit of trouble. Uh, but it's still on, it's flashing between 9 and 10 milliamps. That's fine. I think that's fine. Let's try actually installing it now. So again, it's going in this Game Boy Pocket. because I never actually properly finished trimming the shell. I can't unplug that until I take the back off.
just leave that in there. Save my teal buttons for another time. And I suppose I gotta flip that up. Let's try out. I've got these clear start select membranes from retro modding. Uh, I bought these back before uh, everyone and their grandma was making colored membranes. Thought it'd be. Thought I'd use them. <laughs> um, I've been planning LED mods for a long time and just never got around to it. Uh, but now there are alternatives. Um, like I said, I will do another video follow up because I don't have clear start and select or uh, A, A, B, and D pad membranes. get some ordered though. Oh, and that's going to be kind of awkward with that wiring there. I wonder if they'd considered that. It's kind of annoying. I'm using their their own backlight kit. Well, I guess I don't have to use the adhesive. It won't stick down flat if I wanted it to. Nonetheless, okay, so like I said, I'm not using the power LED portion of this. So I am going to literally cut it off. Um, I'd suggest cutting just above the ground solder point, but in this particular case, I will probably be reusing it. So I'm going to cut right in the middle of that ground solder point, just like that. And for those who are like, oh my God, you can just cut a PCB. Well, yes, I, I, can, I can look at this PCB and see how the traces are going to be able to analyze and know that I can indeed just cut it. And it still works fine. But I am going to do this without... Actually, you know what? Nah, let's try it. See what happens. I can always... Oh, wait. No, I don't want to rip it off because it might, might get destroyed if I ever have to swap this thing out. And if they ever make a revision that acknowledges those solder points, then I will want to do that. I'll just tin up that ground, tin up that voltage pad. Get it aligned as best as possible and uh, stick it down. Probably shouldn't see that because even though this is a clear shell, it is pretty dark. It seems to fit fine too. Jam that in there and pull it apart later.
Hey, what's going on here? Now I don't want to boot. That's awkward. Hmm. There it goes. Okay. Weird quirk. But all right, there you go. Buttons are glowing red because I have a red membrane on top of the LEDs. Start and select are glowing white because I, well, almost white. One of them looks a little more blue than the other, but uh, that one's still missing its red diode. So unfortunately I can't do much with that. Let us try swapping the buttons around. So I've also got these pink membranes, which normally I wouldn't use for something like this, but these are the closest I have to clear. Um, they aren't transparent, but the material is light enough that I think it will be good enough. It will allow enough light transmissivity. Keep throwing my screwdriver. Yeah, still not quite there. Um, I think we really need some uh, clear buttons and clear membranes. So I'll have to follow up with. Oh, keep hitting the touch sensor. There you go. Ain't too bad. I'm curious to see what it looks like with uh, opaque, opaque, opaque buttons and membranes. Probably can't see squat. But it'll at least be interesting to find out. stick the teal ones back in there. I am fairly confident that these teal sets, both the buttons and the membranes, are from Funny Playing. Oop, that screw's gone. Because I keep throwing stuff. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't be able to see anything if I didn't have a clear shell. So, I guess that makes sense, but don't do not do that. Can hardly even see the A, B, and D-pad. My filming lights are off. It's just ambient lighting, you know, from my apartment. You can only see the start and select lights. But, yeah, it is what it is. Oh, let's double check that the buttons still work because that ain't right. I just, actually, I don't think I have the board seated properly. And that's a me problem, not a mod problem. Actually, I wonder if I have smoke start and select here. I have a bunch of colors. Probably not what I want, though. No, of course not. I don't even know if they make smoke. All I have are more bright colors that aren't conducive to uh, LEDs, but I don't know, still pretty neat. 
these lightish blue buttons. I think those might look pretty good. Oh, and I have, ah, everything is coming together. I have blue start and select. That feels seated properly. It feels seated properly, but it isn't because I forgot to put a membrane in there. <laughs> How about pink? Because again, that's what I have. Clear would be best, but you work with what you get. I don't think these buttons are compatible with this shell on account of them getting stuck down. And yeah, that ain't great. I'll have to revisit with more um, membrane and button options, but it's pretty neat. I dig it. I have absolutely no idea what the ETA on this mod is. I have absolutely no idea what the pricing on this mod is. Uh, all I know is they're almost definitely going through with it and it'll probably be soon and based off the price of their kits and all the other stuff it'll probably be pretty competitive but your guess is as good as mine until then. Uh, do gotta give a quick shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending this my way to tinker with. I think it's neat. Um, it is a bit of a shame that all these mods are coming at the same time. Uh, like, I just got done doing videos on Natalie's Game Boy Color LED button mod, and then Funny Playing's Game Boy Color LED button mod. Uh, and now we have the One Chip LED button mod for Game Boy Pocket. Presumably other consoles are coming. Who knows? Uh, I know Natalie already makes them for other consoles. Uh, Funny Playing is only making them for Game Boy Color right now, but... This one is more comparable to Natalie's mod because it is literally just dumb LEDs and resistor, whereas Funny Playing's is a whole, um, like, RGB programmable pulse, pulse with modulation sort of business. Um, it works. Check out the videos on them if you want to know more. Uh, I'm fairly certain they're public. If not, they'll at least be public by the time this video goes public. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have a backlog. I film things... In, in chunks and then upload semi and then publish semi regularly so that I don't have like a dearth of content. I don't, I don't upload like six videos this week and then nothing until next month or something, you know? Um, but it works out. There's videos, check the description for links. Um, I dig this kit. I'd like to see more stuff like this. I think this is cool. Um, obviously it doesn't do anything for the performance of the Game Boy. If anything, it'll hurt the performance of the Game Boy. But it, it's, it's RGB. It gives you more frames per second. That's how it works, right? Um, anyway, that's all I got. Catch you all next time.